My Greatest Ambition is a short story by Morris Lurie published in 1984. It is a first-person autobiographical narration from the point of view of a 13-years-old author as he remembers the pursuit of his first childhood ambition and its aftermath. The young author wanted to be a comic strip artist. He considered the ambitions of others to be ordinary usual and commonplace such as astronomer nuclear physicist business tycoon mathematicians farmers chemists and doctors. All the while he considered his dream as being practical resourceful and different from the other children his age who he scorned to be dreamers idle speculators a generation of hopeless romantics, and all with their heads in the clouds. This is ironic that the narrator himself was a hopeless romantic in the pursuit of his dream occupation. The narrator follows up his dream of being a comic strip artist by practically making one full-length inked and original six-page comic strip himself. Afterwards he read it through 60 or 70 times, analyzed it, studied it, stared at it, finally pronounced it not too bad. But he did not know what to do with his creation. The naive narrator had not thought of the aftermath of making a comic strip which is somewhat relatable to his scorn of the dreamers therefore he put his creation away in a wardrobe. Until the next day when his classmate Michael Lazarus happened to mention in a chance conversation that the narrator could publish his work in a magazine in Melbourne. Lazarus had introduced an entirely new idea of publication which made the narrator excited as it was an outlet for showcasing his talent and a way forward in fulfilling his dream career. It is a humorous self-effacing memory piece as the author-author creates humor through the portrayal of his father's undermining antics the phone call descriptions with Miss Gordon and the awkward meeting and the lackluster tour of the boy magazine. The young narrator in an unnecessarily loud voice twice fixes a meeting with Miss Gordon from a public pay phone while standing on tiptoe. The narrator arrives at the boy magazine office wearing his father's ridiculous good suit that has enough material in the lapels alone to make three suits. The first impression of the magazine's ordinary and not at all imposing or impressive office where the receptionist is unaware of his identity indicates the letting down of his hopes and expectations. A sense of awkwardness and uneasiness is created in the meeting at the boy magazine office with the young narrator whose face felt stiff from smiling constantly. First the receptionist did not recognize him and he had to wait for a long time to be invited into a meeting room. Then his quick easy acceptance of the 15 pounds as he leaned back without any bargain while the adults looked down at the floor and coughed adds to the ridiculousness of the situation. Further, the narrator is shown a professional comic strip that he thinks is just history and pictures with inking and lettering which were just SOSO. The boring tour of the factory and the childlike treatment of the narrator by giving him an ice cream puts a damper on young Lurie's hopes and expectations. The narrator's father is announced as a great scoffer who dismisses his son's accomplishments by posing questions and doubts 50 times a night at least. It can be gleaned that the father has a dismissive yet suspicious nature and systemic distrust. This is evident from his doubts about the check's authenticity as he held it up to the light. Upon the return of the second comic strip by the magazine, the father had a field day which further highlights his scornful and flippant nature. However, the mother of the narrator is overtly proud of her son's triumphs as she is heard on the phone explaining to all her friends what a clever son she had. But in her familial pride, she crosses personal boundaries of the narrator disregarding privacy consent and space by oversharing a personal private thing of the comic strip's publication with all the family members, including uncles and sisters' brothers. The publication of the comic strip in the boy magazine earns the narrator the title of a hero for a day at school. The rejection of the second publication fizzles out the dream of becoming a comic strip artist for the young Lurie who then decides to be a painter but has the self-awareness to know right from the start that it would be no good. The narrator realized that he had become like everyone else a dreamer. The short story is about having hopes and dreams and the will to pursue or at least try out practically one's ambitions in life.